Hi guys, my name is Marie and welcome to my kawaii world. So it's winter time, it's super cold outside, it's soup season. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about different Korean soups that you should try during winter. But first I wanna give a big thank you to my Patreons, Hello Dino, Christy, Bonnie, Aaron, Pinball Reviewer, and V. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. And if you guys want to become Patreon members, then check a link in the description box below. So long tong is probably my favorite winter soup. It's this really savory white bone broth made of ox bones, usually the legs. It's cooked for a long time and it takes on this milky white color. And a lot of times when it comes to the table, it's unseasoned and you have to season it yourself with salt, pepper, and green onions. Sometimes they will put rice in the bowl or sometimes they will give it to you separately. And they also add these thin white noodles to the soup. This is one of my go-to soups when everyone in my family is sick. I think it's really nourishing and hearty. And in my opinion, this is the Korean version of soul food. It's often served with kimchi and gakdugi or radish kimchi and that kind of helps to cut the fatty richness of the broth. It's not a spicy soup, so this is really good for kids to eat. Mommy. Yes. <laughs> you want some more? Go. <laughs> Kalbi tang. This is another rich Korean soup that's great for winter time. It's a soup that's made by boiling beef, short ribs, radish, onions, garlic, and ginger for a long time. Beef short ribs tend to be really fatty, so this is another rich, hearty meal that I like to feed my family when they get sick. This usually comes pre-seasoned, so you don't need to add your own salt, usually, and it's served with rice and clear glass noodles. This is kind of similar to solong tongue, but it differs in that it's made with beef short ribs rather than ox bones, and it's usually not milky white. Yes. What do you want to say? Hmm? Oh. This is a beef soup that's made with various parts of the cow, and it's a little bit different from kalbi tongue and solong tongue because it's a clear broth that seems a little lighter than the other two, but it's still really filling and hearty. Kom tongue is more of a meat flavored soup than a rich bone broth. And different regions of Korea have their own versions of it. And Naju is famous for its komtang. It's usually topped with eggs and it has a few pieces of beef in it. Kongnyamulkuk is a light soup that you're supposed to eat when you have a hangover in the morning. And it could be made with beef broth or anchovy broth. And it's full of bean sprouts and it's often flavored with red pepper flakes or spicy peppers. So if you have kids, then you have to watch out for the spice. Some restaurants will give the kids their own soup for free without red pepper in it. And other restaurants will just make the soup with red pepper so they don't have anything that's not spicy. And they'll often serve it with a raw egg and seaweed, and you can eat this however you want. You can put the egg in the soup when it first comes out because the soup is usually piping hot and it'll cook the egg. Or you can pour a little bit of the soup into the egg mixture and eat it with rice and seaweed, however you like it. Mandu kuk. This soup contains Korean dumplings or mandu that are boiled in an anchovy based broth. And this will sometimes contain egg and dok or Korean rice cakes. It's a pretty light and refreshing soup compared to Solong Tang. It's very good. It tastes like bread. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you guys like to eat during winter and check out these playlists for more videos about food and cafes in Korea. I'll talk to you next time. Bye!